Hi friends, welcome to Opa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 41 in Python playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about iterators in Python and how to create an iterator type of class and also what is top iterator. So let's try to understand what is iterator. Before that, if you have watched my previous videos in this Python list, you already know that there is something called a list type, tuple type, dictionary type and a set type. So all these are like data types which will allow you to get the multiple values into a single data type right so you know that so if you have seen my previous videos you know that or else i will strongly encourage to watch all those videos and then come to this video so all these data types are actually like iterator iteratable objects so that means that particular data type will contain collection of data and you can iterate over that data so let me practically show you that very quickly so let me go to visual studio code here so here let's assume i have one list so let me let me make it little bit big here so let's assume my list name is my list okay and inside this list i have values like one two three maybe so now i can iterate over this list right so you know that how you how you used to iterate by using for loop for x in my list that means take each each item from my list and then loop through and then maybe inside the loop maybe i will print that for for simplicity okay so let me save these changes and then let me run this code see it is iterating over the items and it is printing the values so this so that means list is like a iteratable so we can iterate over that uh, data type values so that's that's called like iteratable but in this video we are focusing about to understand iterator so the difference between iteratable and iterator is like so uh, all these objects right whatever we see like list tuple and dictionary all these object, objects actually has a implementation of iterator iterate method actually so uh, this iterate function or inbuilt method actually gets you a object out of your list and that object type is nothing but like a iterator object so all this may be make little sense uh, i mean you may be not understanding this at this moment so let me go to visual studio code and let me practically explain this what i mean so for example let's assume this is my list right so now there is something called like it iterator function see iter iterator function so to that iteration function if i pass my list or if i pass my tuple or if i pass my uh, set whatever it is if you pass those data types objects here right what will happen right from this object it will create a new object which is iterator type i will practically show you that so let's assume whatever output coming from this particular call i want to store it into my it my iterator something like that okay so i am storing the output of this code which is like iterator function call to my list into this variable so now here below let's try to print type of that object whatever i just created my it right my iterator so let me save these changes and then here let me execute this code here see the type is list iterator right this is like a list iterator if i create a iterator from the tuple then it will show like tuple iterator so basically this object is iterator object the object what you create using this iterator function is called iterator object so what is the use of this object how we can use it we will practically understand this so for example if you create an object like this iterator then what you can use is there is something called next function using that next function you can iterate over the items inside that iterator object so let me practically show you that what i mean so for example here let's try to print uh, there is something called next function okay so inside the next function if you pass this iterator object what it will do it will try to take the value from this iterator object and it will try to print that and if i do this print once again below then what will happen it will take the next item it will print so let me uh, let me, so there are totally three items right so let's try to use three print functions here and let's try to save these changes and then let me uh, delete the code whatever i have here or let me comment this code and let me save these changes now let's try to execute this code see it is printing one two three how that magic is happening the the reason is if you see this code we created an iterator object from our list using this iterator function and from that object using this next function we are trying to take out the values so like this you can iterate over the values inside the iterator actually uh, you may be wondering what if, what will happen if i add this print statement once again here if you see here the first iterator will get the first value then the second will get the second value then the third will get the third value what about this fourth one there is no fourth item in the list right so what will happen it will throw error basically it will stop the iterator there so let me clear this here and let me rerun this code you will make sense of it see 
it printed one two three okay uh, sorry i haven't saved my changes see here let me save these changes and now let's try to run this code here see one two three printed when the line eight tried to execute at the time it given a error like stop iteration because there is no value inside this there is no other item or there is no other value inside this iterator to to take out and print right so that's the reason so not only this you you no need to use this uh, iterator function like this even on top of your list object you can use this iterator function you can see see here even like this also you can use so that means this list object actually has a implementation of this iterator function that's the reason you are able to do like this so this is like an object right and uh, on the object you are using dot and then using a function name that means that particular object class has a implementation for the iterator function so that's the reason you are able to do that so even here also like this so on in so this is my it is nothing but like a iterator object right on the iterator object also you can use this next function call to do the same activity so that means what it means this iterator class this up this is like iterator object right so that means there is a there will be a class called iterator so inside that class there might be a implementation for this nest function already that's the reason you can may you can able to call this like this okay so let me save these changes and let me run this code for your understanding whether it will work or not see still it is working right so that means you can use this already implemented functions inside that class so by this you can make sense that list uh, list type has a function implementation called iterator inside its uh, class definition i will practically show you that also so this my list is a object right so for example uh, there is a uh, there is a very useful function called dri so this dri function will take any class or object and uh, inside that class or object whatever the properties and methods it has it will try to print that information so let me use this print statement here and let me try to use the dri function on top of my list object that means i am trying to see the properties and methods of the list using this dri function so let me save these changes and now let me run this code if you see here see you have iterator function also inside that list class and also you have this uh, next function uh, yeah sorry iterator only right so that's how it is so with this we, we can make sense okay this iterator function is already implemented inside the class of the my list not only this you no need to pass the list object name here you can pass that class name also directly list is the class name for the list objects so let me save these changes and here let me clear this and if i see here see here also it is see so, so that means your iteratable objects or classes has a implementation for this iterator function inbuilt okay so let's go to the presentation so uh, as i said okay and one more thing one other point is whenever we use the for each loop right even the for each loop behind the scenes will do the same thing they will they, it will create a iterator object and from the iterator object it will use the next method and try to fetch the values and print for you so but in the code if you see here if i scroll down if you see this for for, uh, for loop implementation you you don't see anywhere i am using a next function or iterator function but still behind the scenes this is what happen it will create a iterator object from your list and from the iterator object for loop is going to use the next function to fetch the each value and print the data here so that's what it will happen okay so now it makes sense like iteratable are like data types which will contain like multiple like list tuple dictionary sets even strings these are like iteratable objects on top of the iteratable objects you can use the iterator iterate function to create a iterator object and once you have the iterator object from the iterator object you can use the next function to fetch the values okay so the same thing i have explained here like iterator is an object that can be iteratable and uh, technically in python iterator is a object which has the implementation for iterator plus next these two functions implementation will be already available inside the class of the iterator object let me practically show you that as well so if you see the same code let me comment this control kc and if i go here if you see i am creator i am creating a iterator object my it right so let's pass this uh, into dir function let's try to see whatever the properties and methods it has so let me copy this my it uh, variable here and then here let me remove all this okay so here let's try to print using the jr function pass your my it object so let me save these changes here and uh, yeah let me remove this print statement what i have at the top let me save these changes now let's try to execute so this time what i am trying to do i am trying to see the properties and methods inside this iterator class and if you see here this has implementation for the iterator function 
and also it has an implementation for the next function. So, with this, it is clear that iterator object or iterator class has implementation for these two methods. Okay. So, we already discussed in our past videos, right? Whenever you create any class, you will be creating, you can use of this init function uh, to, to assign the values uh, into the properties, all that we have seen in our past videos. If you have not watched it, please try to watch it. Similarly, let's assume you want to create a class uh, which, which is like a iterator type, like uh, that class should act as an iterator object or iterator type class then you should make sure you have implementation for this iterator uh, function and also this nest function you need to make sure to have that so let me practically show you that let me go to the presentation so to create a iterator type of class so this is what i said you need to have implementation for this iterator function and next function so these functions are like similar to init function what you use so whenever you try to create a class inside the class you can create a function with this name iterator name and with this name next function name but you need to make sure this iterator function should always return the iterator object itself the same class object it should return back and this next function uh, should always do the operations and also uh, must return the next value using the next keyword it should return the next value i mean let me practically show you that if it is not making sense so let me go to notepad i have already written a code here for the uh, interest of the time so let me go to visual studio code here so let me remove all this and let me paste my code here and if you closely observe this code now what i am doing here is if you see I created a, um, uh, let me remove this debug console empty. So, here I created a class called my iterator and I have created two functions. One is iterator function and one is next function. I mean two methods inside this class. As I said, to make any class as an iterator type, you should make sure to have an implementation for two for these two methods. So, and as I said, for this iterator method, we need to make sure to return the object itself. So, here what self is nothing but like a object of the same class. So, object of the same class is getting returned here. So, before returning, I am assigning one value like uh, there is a property I am creating called num inside this class and for that property, I am assigning value 1 and simply returning that same class object back. But if you see the next function, what here, here I am doing is, I am trying to uh, first checking whether this num value, num property value is less than 20 or not. If it is less than 20, then I am taking the value of the num into a new variable called x and then I am incrementing the value of the num property by 1 and then I am simply returning the x. So, what will happen right if you create an object for this particular iterator uh, class and if you try to print it, it is going to print the values from 1 to 20. So, why, why, why that will happen I will practically tell you see simply observe this code. The moment you have the num value greater than 20 automatically the if condition will become false and it will directly go into else and in the else we are using something called a, we are raising an exception and that exception name is stop iterator so our stop iteration this iteration uh, this expect this exception will actually break the iteration loop there so all this may be little confusing at this moment so for your understanding let me do one thing let me uh, comment this code control kc and then also let me comment this else code also here and now if you closely observe the implementation this next method implementation simply incrementing the value of the num property by one and returning it every time and there is no break right so that is the reason here what i am doing i created an object for this uh, same class and that object i am by using this iterator uh, function i am creating an iterator object from that particular uh, my id object and then i am trying to use a for loop and as i said for loop actually uses the next function internally and fetch the next value and if you see what is the implementation of the next function here we have next function is going to always increment the value and return the uh, previous value. So, increment the value, return the previous value, increment the value, return the previous value. So, the loop will continue go on. There is no end, there is no condition to break here, right, because I commented this line. So, that is the reason if I execute this code now, it is going to run continuously. See, I am executing the code by pressing the F5 and if you closely observe the uh, below, uh, let us wait for the execution to start here. See, it is continuously printing the numbers, it is keep on going. So, let us let me stop this execution here by clicking this stop button. Right. So, you understood right why 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 the loop is continuously running as I said this for loop is going to make use of the next function internally and perform the loop. So, and if you see the next function implementation it is returning the previous value and incrementing the value by one. So, again the loop will continue value will increment and return the previous value value will increment and return the previous value. So, there is keep on it, it is like a never ending process. So, that is the reason you you see in your my execution is keep on going. Right. So, if you want to break it, you need to make sure by use you use some condition inside that uh, 
uh, what to call inside this uh, next function implementation and also try to raise a exception saying stop iterator so that right your loop will stop there or else right it is going to be like a never ending process so now if you see this code I am trying to print only till 20 values. So once you reach greater than 20 here, it will go into the else block and it will stop the iterator. So now let me save all these changes here. Now this time let me execute this code. It will print only 1 to 20. See here. Okay. So this is how it works. Okay. So let me see here. So till 20 only it printed, right? So this is how this iterator uh, uh, concept works in the Python. Uh, this video may be a little confusing for when you are first time watching it. But yeah, please try to watch this video, video multiple times to make a sense of it. Basically, we created a class like uh, how we have a list class, tuple class, set class, dictionary class, which are like iterator rules, right? From those class objects, we can create iterator object using this iterate function, right? Similarly, we created a new class, uh, which uh, which also like iterator, iterator rule. So to make that iterator rule, we, we, we created an implementation of these two functions and then uses the iterator function to create an iterator object and then perform loop on it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever I videos. Thank you so much.